In this video, uh, I want to share a news story with you, and I want to talk about this news story, uh, talk about it a bit in the context of what Jesus said. He said, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, and neither is anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Uh, that's Luke 8, 17. Jesus is saying that nothing has been concealed that will not someday become evident and nothing has been hidden that will not be made known and that will come to light. Isn't that interesting? Uh, also in this video, I want to take a look at a comment that uh, we've received, a comment that I'd like to answer uh, in this video to help us understand uh, these matters in uh, Bible prophecy. And so first, let's look at this news story. This is a story that's being reported from several news sources. Top ranking U.S. government officials pressured Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms to censor content the federal government did not want posted according to federal government emails obtained by two state attorney generals. The emails procured in a federal lawsuit filed by the Missouri Attorney General and by the Louisiana Attorney General detail months of coordination between U.S. government officials and social media companies on what information to censor regarding COVID-19. The discovery provided so far has demonstrated that the coordinated censorship enterprise was extremely broad. The lawsuit's discovery identified 45 federal officials who communicated with social media executives on what information to censor. The relationship between the U.S. government and social media employees was the result of numerous meetings between federal bureaucrats and the social media companies. For example, an email from April of 2021 discussed a scheduled meeting for White House staff to be briefed by Twitter employees on which vaccine information should be censored. Emails between Facebook employees and the CDC show many instances where Facebook employees censored COVID-19 information after getting input from the United States government. The emails show, for example, a meta executive wrote to a Department of Health and Human Services official about changing Facebook's policies and removing pages, removing groups, and removing accounts that the White House administration identified as wanting to censor. The White House, the government, wanted to get rid of these Facebook accounts, wanted to get rid of these Facebook pages. The federal government wanted to stifle First Amendment free speech, forcing uh, themselves upon the social media companies. Let me read the, more of this. The Attorney General's lawsuit accuses the executive branch of the United States government of enacting an unconstitutional speech code via social media. Quote, senior government officials in the executive branch moved and acted in, con in collusion with social media companies to suppress disfavored speakers, to suppress disfavored viewpoints, and to suppress disfavored content on social media platforms under the Orwellian guise 
of halting so-called disinformation or misinformation. Earlier this summer, the Justice Department refused to produce communications covering up refused to produce communications between the federal government and social media officials. So the Missouri and the Louisiana Attorney Generals filed a petition with the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Louisiana to compel the federal government to produce the emails. The court ruled in favor of the petition resulting in a recently published batch of emails. The emails reveal extensive censorship collusion between the U.S. government and social media companies that involve dozens of federal officials across at least 11 federal agencies. There were at least 45 federal officials at the Department of Homeland Security the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, and the Office of the Sur Surgeon General, who communicated with social media platforms about what information to censor. To this day, the Department of Justice is stonewalling efforts to obtain further communications between the highest ranking U.S. government officials and the social media giants. The federal government has been uncooperative and has resisted complying with the discovery order every step of the way. Many U.S. House of Representative congressmen are now working together in proposing legislation to stop the executive branch from coordinating with social media companies on content censorship. The Protecting Speech from Government Interference Act would prohibit federal bureaucrats and other executive branch officials from working with private companies to censor or limit free speech. So we have U.S. government officials at the highest level working with Facebook, working with Twitter, working with YouTube, etc., working with these social media companies to keep people in the dark, to censor information that the U.S. government does not want people to hear. On this channel, I've tried to bring information to you over the past three years, and I've received strikes from YouTube repeatedly, to the point where this channel was almost banned but we're still here, thank God. All we want to do is give you information, honest information, but the whole story has been censored by social media platforms in collusion with the U.S. government. Some people say social media platforms are private companies and they can do as they please, but the U.S. government is sworn to uphold First Amendment constitutional rights of free speech. The U.S. government has had a long history of violating the rights that it is sworn to protect. It's never a good thing when the government gets into the business of deciding what the people can hear and what they can't hear. The U.S. government has been in the business of telling people what the government wants people to believe what the government wants people to think, shutting out the whole story, not allowing different viewpoints to be heard, and not allowing certain facts and certain news stories to be told. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, Jesus said, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. In other words, nothing has been concealed that will not become evident, God says. Nothing has been hidden that will not be made known and that will not come to light. You know, I believe that in the months to come, the truth will come out about many things that have been covered up for the past three years. Truth has a way of revealing itself 
no matter how disturbing or no matter how inconvenient or no matter how unwanted the truth may be. The truth will come out. And uh, if not in this world, the truth will come out in that great day when Jesus said everything is going to be brought out into the light. You know, that passage in the Bible has always brought me a lot of comfort. It's in Luke chapter 8 uh, and in other Gospels that all the truth will come out on that great day when everything will be brought to light. Uh, have you ever been falsely accused? Have you ever been mistreated and then you were the one who was blamed? Uh, many of us has, have felt those personal injuries and someday all the truth will come out. Things have happened in my life that hurt me deeply, false accusations made, that will never be cleared up in this world, I know. But it will all be cleared up someday when everything, Jesus said, everything will be brought out into the light. You know, just a couple of days ago, a brother, uh, and I thank this brother, and I love this brother, he wanted me to know about some videos that were being made uh, that make accusations against me, uh, videos that vilify me, uh, videos that uh, uh, cast aspersions on my motives and on me. Uh, and so he sent me links to uh, these videos, some, some of these videos. And, you know, I, I emailed him back and I thanked him for caring about me and caring about this, this matter and, and about wanting to inform me about this. But I told him, you know, I made a decision a long time ago. I'm not going to listen to, to all of this nonsense, all these accusations and all of this hatred that's being thrown at me. Uh, why give any of my time to Satan? Uh, why listen to the devil? Uh, the devil will never listen to reason. Uh, the accusations and the hatred uh, that is thrown at us as Christians, it's going to be there as long as we serve the Lord. Jesus said, beware when all men speak well of you. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're doing God's work, uh, beware when everyone speaks well of you because you're not doing it faithfully. If you're being faithful to God, faithful to the Word of God, faithful to Jesus, then just as they hated Jesus, just as they persecuted Jesus, they're going to hate us. They're going to hate those of us that follow Jesus. And so uh, beware if everybody's speaking well of you. Uh, it, that's just not going to happen if you're serving the Lord. The devil is going to attack you. The devil is going to come against you. Uh, Satan is going to uh, be uh, out to get you. Because after all, you've gotten the devil's attention because you're being effective. You're doing something for the Lord. You're serving God. And you're doing it uh, in, the, in the spirit of the Lord. And so the spirit of evil is going to come against you. Uh, so I don't listen to all the chatter that comes from Satan. Uh, you know, don't bother sending me. And I, I, like I say, I thank this brother for caring. I know his, his intentions were good. But uh, I, I say to everyone, you know, don't bother to tell me about it. Don't bother to show it to me because uh, I don't have time for that nonsense. I'm not, I don't care. You know, I, I know uh, I'm not going to dignify that uh, with a response. Uh, I'm not going to try to dialogue with the devil. You can't dialogue with the devil. The devil always attacks. The devil always despises. The devil never listens to reason. My conscience is clear. I'm serving the Lord as the Lord leads me. Everything I do is freely given to all who will listen. You know, I don't monetize my videos. I do not monetize, meaning I do not make money. Every time people watch my videos, I don't make money from people watching my videos. Those people that, that monetize their videos, they have advertising on their videos, they make money. Every time you watch their video, that you're, you're, they're making money off of you. They're making money off of YouTube. They're making money doing what they're doing. And I believe that's wrong. When you're serving the Lord and doing God's work and preaching the gospel, it's not for profit. It's not, you don't, you don't do it making money uh, the apostles were very clear you know they said no we're not going to do that we don't have any part of that you know anyone doing that has the wrong motive my motive is i love god i fear god i love 
God's people. I want to serve the Lord and I want to serve the church. I want to serve the Lord. And that's why, you know, that's why I live. That's what I'm all about. That's my life. And, and that's why I do what I do. And my conscience is clear about all of that. You know, I don't plead for money. I don't beg for money. I don't say, please help us. But now there are people that do help us. They've prayed about it and God has moved their heart to help us. And I thank God for them. I'm very thankful. Uh, I mean, that, that enables us to do this work full time. It enables me not to have to be concerned about doing something else. I'm able to focus on studying and trying to serve the Lord and do this work. So I'm thankful for those who pray about it and are led by God to help us. That's wonderful. But that's the way that, that a work of God should always be supported. Uh, we support the church, we support God's people, we support those who do God's work, we support those who minister freely. We just give freely. And uh, it's not right for people to uh, try to profit or to spend their time begging and pleading, send money, send money. No, that's not what we're all about. No, I'm thankful for support that comes from God through God's vessels in this world through God's people but you know we're not going to monetize we're not going to plead we're not going to this is not what we're about and so people that accuse uh, me of that anybody that follows my channel you know that's a lie uh, we only uh, we pray and we pray and we pray over everything we do here uh, I devote my time to this work uh, because I believe in my Lord and serving my Lord. I pray over everything I do. I pray over every video I make. I study and I do my best to share the Word of God to the best of my ability. Uh, I'm just a human vessel. I'm not infallible. I'm not inerrant. I make no claim to be a great prophet of God like some people. I am just simply God's servant, the least of God's servants, and I choose to follow my God, do what God calls me to do. He tells me to minister and to preach and to teach uh, to the best of my ability. He is infallible. He is inerrant. And, and uh, if we'll listen to him and follow what he says, then we'll be on the right track. And that's what I'm doing. And uh, my conscience is clear. Again, I want to say that. So I don't worry about my critics, but I just want to share that with you. Uh, the truth will all come out. On that great day when everything is brought to light, we will be vindicated. Those of us that have served the Lord with a clear conscience and know that we're doing it simply because we love the Lord. I know that where my treasure is. My treasure is in heaven. I'm laying up treasures in heaven. That's just what Jesus said we should do. Uh, so I would just remind you, be careful what you say. Because Jesus said that you will be held accountable for every idle word that you speak. These people that speak idle words against uh, God's servants, uh, you will be held accountable. Now, I want to get to a comment here. And here's, here's this comment. After watching uh, our video on the number 666, which is my most watched video, if you haven't watched it, I, I hope you will. Uh, on the number 666, I made a video, and uh, after watching that video, this brother said this. He commented this. This is the best case I've ever heard for the Antichrist. But what about the scriptures talking about when he is revealed? Has the Antichrist sat in the temple and claimed to be God yet? Okay, now, the idea that he won't be revealed until he sits in the temple and shows himself that he is God, that is a, a misconception that is taught by the dispensationalists. Uh, these are the people who believe in a pre-trib rapture. Uh, they think that no one will know who the Antichrist is until after what they think is going to happen, a pre-trib rapture, which the Bible does not teach a pre-trib rapture, brothers and sisters, not at all. But they think that no one will know who the Antichrist is until after their pre-trib rapture. And so they think that, that for now, 
his identity is irrelevant. I mean, really, they're not interested. They don't care. I mean, they think, well, we'll be raptured out of here. We'll be gone. And then the Antichrist will be revealed when he goes into the temple and, and shows himself that he is God. But the Bible does not say any of that. The Bible does not say any of that. The Bible does not say there's a pre-trib rapture. And the Bible does not say that he won't be revealed until he goes into the temple and shows himself that he is God. The Bible says that he is revealed when the one who is taken out of the way is removed, taken out of the way. We believe that is a mighty angel, the mighty power that now holds back, the Bible says, is taken out of the way. We believe that that mighty angelic power has been taken out of the way now, already, in our time. We believe these are the last days. We believe that we're there. And we believe that that has been done. That that angelic power that held back the revelation of the Antichrist, the revealing of the Antichrist, we believe that power has been removed so that we today, in these last days that we're living in, can see who he is. So they think that his identity is irrelevant. And this actually leaves uh, some of them uh, to not even be concerned who the Antichrist is. And so they can support uh, the Antichrist. Like, like uh, as we believe with beyond a shadow of a doubt, the Bible reveals that Donald Trump is the Antichrist. We say this after studying the Word of God, looking at Donald Trump as the fulfillment of the Bible prophecies. We see his life, the words he says, the things he does, his position in power in these end times. We see him as the fulfillment of of Bible prophecy, the, the final Antichrist of these end times. And we are seeing this being revealed to people all the time. We get comments from people continuously whose eyes are being opened. People who voted for Donald Trump in 2016, many of them voted for Donald Trump in 2020, and their eyes have been opened, and they're seeing now by the grace of God, it's being revealed to them that Donald Trump is the Antichrist. And this is happening in our time. This was revealed to me in 2015 and many people way back then. Uh, and it's being revealed to God's children over the period of time uh, in these last days. Uh, but there are many people that say, well, it doesn't matter even if he is the Antichrist. These are Christian people that believe in a pre-trib rapture, that are saying it doesn't matter, they can support him as president, even if it turns out that he is the Antichrist. I've heard from people saying that, that even if he turns out he's the Antichrist, the, the most wicked man the Bible ever describes, they're saying they can still support him for president because they're going to be gone by the time that he is revealed as the Antichrist. And for now, like uh, Trump supporting Pastor uh, Robert Jeffress, they say, I want the meanest, toughest SOB I can find to be my president. So that's what they're saying. You know, they want the toughest, meanest SOB that they can find to be their president. That's what Robert Jeffress said. He doesn't care about uh, having a man of God in the White House. He wants a mean man. He wants a mean man in the White House. And so that's what uh, he had in Donald Trump, and that's what he's going to get again. Uh, so this was my answer to this comment that this man made. Thanks for your comment. The Bible does not say the Antichrist is not revealed until he sits in the temple and shows himself to be God. By that time, the Antichrist is already well on his way fulfilling the Bible prophecies. And the Antichrist is already, by that time, well recognized by discerning believers to be the Antichrist. We believe the angelic power that held back the revealing of the Antichrist has been taken out of the way. And we believe that Antichrist Trump is being revealed now by the Holy Spirit to those who are seeking God's wisdom and guidance in these end times. And so that was my answer. And so I wanted to share that with you. Uh, I thank you for your questions. Uh, please uh, don't hesitate to ask 
uh, your questions. And I will pray over your questions and answer them to the best of my ability. But please let your questions be a serious question. Uh, I get a lot of scornful and, and shallow questions. Uh, anyone that is being unkind in the name of the Lord, here you are calling yourself a Christian and you're speaking to me without love. You're speaking to me without kindness. You're not able to be civil and, and decent uh, in your comment. Uh, judgment is going to be very harsh against idle words spoken in the name of the Lord uh, in in vain, spoken uh, in unkindness. If you love God, love your brother. If you love God, love your sister. Uh, if you love God, show your love for God by showing your love for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, be saved. Be born again. Be sure of your salvation. I've, I'm saying that to everybody now. And I, I try to close my videos by being sure that uh, I make it make that point to everyone. The, these are the last days. The days are short. Don't come up short and and not be right with God. Be sure of your salvation. Be sure. Uh, you can be sure that if there's no love in your heart for me or if there's no love in your heart for your brothers and sisters, uh, then you can be sure you're not saved. If you are saved, you will love the church. You will love God's people. You will love your brother. You may disagree with me 100%, but if you're a Christian, you'll still love me. And, and that's your calling. You, you may not like me, but you will love me as a Christian. Uh, if, you, if you are a Christian, you love people. You love souls. And you want uh, to show your love and kindness uh, to people. So I encourage you, be sure of your salvation. Be absolutely sure that you've made peace with God. Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. To repent means to simply turn to God with your whole heart and believe in Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins. He suffered and paid the price so that we could go to heaven instead of hell. It's just that wonderful. Uh, he did it so that we could be with him forever instead of being lost forever and that's that's the that's god's heart for you he wants to spend eternity with you he wants you to have joy and peace with him forever in heaven that is god's desire and uh, that's what he wants with you so be sure that you're ready to spend eternity with him through jesus christ the only way to heaven jesus suffered and died to pay the price for our sins be sure that you're going to be with God forever through Jesus Christ. And, and then draw near to God day by day by day. Be sure that, that you are drawing nearer to God. Read your Bible every day. Pray and pray from all your heart every day. Uh, fellowship and, and encourage your brothers and sisters. Show the love of God to others. Uh, try to tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody what Jesus has done for you. Talk to people about your Lord Jesus. Live your life for the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord. Lay up your treasures in heaven. You'll never regret it.